A modern lesson. Martin Luther King is known to have said that justice is love in calculation. Justice is love working against anything that stands against love. Standing beside love is always justice. Michael Edwards, reflecting upon King's message, added that love is the anchor or inward expression of social justice, and justice is the outward expression of love in calculation, a conscious design for remaking the world around a radically different rationality than self-interest. Deep transformations are possible if love and justice reinforce each other to create a permanent shift in direction among human beings and the institutions they create. The first ancient lesson is from Isaiah, the books 5 and 11. Let me sing for my loved one a love song for his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug it, cleared away its stones, planted it with excellent vines, built a tower inside it, and dug out a wine vat in it. He expected it to grow good grapes, but it grew rotten grapes. So now you who live in Jerusalem, you people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What, what more was there to do for my vineyard that I haven't done for it? When I expected it to grow good grapes, why did it grow rotten grapes? Now let me tell you what I'm doing to my vineyard. I'm removing its hedge so it will be destroyed. I'm breaking down its walls so it will be trampled. I'll turn it into a ruin. It won't be pruned or hoed, and thorns and thistles will grow up. I will command the clouds not to rain on it. The vineyard of the Lord of heavenly forces is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are the plantings in which God delighted. God expected justice, but there was bloodshed, righteousness, but there was a cry of distress. A shoot will grow up from the stump of Jesse, a branch will sprout from his roots. The Lord's spirit will rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding a spirit of planning and strength, a spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. He will delight in fearing the Lord. He won't judge by appearances nor decide by hearsay. He will judge the needy with righteousness and decide with equity for those who suffer in the land. He will strike the violent with the rod of his mouth. By the breath of his lips, he will kill the wicked. Righteousness will be the belt around his hips and faithfulness the belt around his waist. From the fifth chapter of Galatians. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Here are spirit-filled words that invited us to wonder. Spirit, Reveal yourself in them and through words spoken here. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity, and I ask that you word my mouth, and I ask that you speak encouragement to your people. Amen. Amen. So, I guess you didn't get the memo <laughs> that I would be preaching today. <laughs> so, since you're here, I want you to know on, um, on Friday when I was driving home from the Women's Guild meeting, I saw the word, you won't believe this, and I'm not trying to be deep, but I saw the word in big bold letters, patience. So I want you to, as I'm reading or I'm telling what I got from the lesson of the text is to remember the words love and patience. The love and patience that God has toward his people. My sermon is love is the evidence of all the fruit of the spirit. God put love in the preparation of the vineyard. There are some people that can cook, but everybody does not know how to put love in their cooking. 
Planting a garden begins long before a seed is planted into the ground. The farmer envisions the desired harvest and then select the finest quality of seeds. The soil is prepared and enriched. The right location, sunlight, and water are needed for the plant to grow. After the seed is planted, the gardener waits, watches, waters, and look for the first sign of growth. Sprouts come, stems, stalks, and leaves begin to spread. Pruning is necessary to shape and train the plant in the direction it needs to grow. Even if you do everything perfect, it does not guarantee a good harvest. Plants can get entangled with other plants, just as Israel did with other nations that served other gods. Despite God's labor with Israel, they made a mockery of his covenant, yielding bad fruit of injustice and oppression. God expected justice and righteousness. The intentions of God are often misunderstood, even today, because we don't understand the thoughts and actions of God. In this text, God used the prophet Isaiah to speak his thoughts and what was on his heart. Many cannot envision God having emotions common to man. And some, perhaps, don't even think God has a heart. The lesson of the Song of the Vineyard shows God's chosen nation was to bear fruit, to carry out his work and to unfold justice, uphold justice. There are six sins identified in the text. Exploiting others, drunkenness, taking pride in sin, confusing moral standards, being conceited, perverting justice. Israel spent many hours drinking and partying while people were dying of hunger and thirst, pursuing our own pleasures while ignoring or exploiting needs of others leaves us empty. God wants us to enjoy life but to avoid, to avoid those activities that could lead us away from him, he is not pleased with. The message today is not about Israel. It, it is about God's intentions for a world mission. You cannot give what you do not have. Our relationship with God is vertical and horizontal. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first com greatest commandment. And the second is, to li is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law of the prophets hang on these two commandments. So I saw love as the evidence of all the fruit of the Spirit. John 15, 8 through 10 says, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Love is recognized when you need it. It can be ignored and recognized sometimes when it's too late. Patience is seen when you are sick and tired and ready to give up. But there is something on the inside that won't allow you to quit. You recognize it is not by your own strength that you are kept. Goodness and kindness come to those who really many times don't deserve it. Self-control means you have or we have experienced consequences of being out of control. 
then there is a lesson that caused you to understand that you needed to change or else. When you have the love of Christ in your heart, you know it because you truly love all people. This doesn't mean that we don't need to grow, but we become willing to work according to God's will. You cannot be a true disciple until you learn this essential lesson. There is no discrimination in the love of God. The love of Christ helps us to accept the truth, even if it contradicts what we believe. We have learned that forgiveness washes away bitterness and brings peace within. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It also protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. And now these three things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Dear friends, let us love one another. For love con comes from God. Oh, I'm sorry. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God shows his love among us. He sent his only son into the world that we might be lived through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atonement, as a sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. I want you to also know that God is not a God that just speaks the truth and prosperity messages. God is a God that loves us so much, he will tell us the truth, even about ourselves. So the reason why I chose this message about the fruit of the spirit is because I believe that was the intention of God for Israel. And in bearing the fruit of the spirit, there are circumstances that may be where God is pruning us. He is preparing us to bear more fruit. So there are two points that I wanna mention in my closing. As we continue to walk according to God's word and love, we will bear the fruit of the Spirit. It is the love of God within us that compels us to love and care for others. Let us pray. God, we give thanks for letting us know that you are with us in every situation we experience in life. We continue to provide what we, you continue to provide what we need within us and through us to accomplish your will. We know that all things will work together for our good because we love you and are called according to your purpose.